As we get further into 2024, the new Call of Duty game edges ever closer. A direct sequel to Black Ops Cold War developed by Treyarch, rumored to be called Black Ops Gulf War. And with that brings the return of Black Ops Zombies. So in this video, we're going to go over what is currently known so far, going over all known leaks and rumors in a period of time when the next Zombies mode could be make or break. So jumping straight in, let's start with the known format for Zombies in Black Ops Gulf War. As it has been heavily rumored and backed up by Charlie Intel sources, is that round-based zombies is going to be the main zombies in this year's game. A return to form for zombies as we've not seen round-based for nearly four years. Technically two if you count Shida Numa and Vanguard, but it really does seem like round-based will be the full focus for this game, which is obviously fantastic news. As for the round-based map or maps themselves, we actually know a weird amount already based on data miners finding coding within MW3 linking to Triarch's upcoming project and zombies mode. So in the files of the game, there are currently two round-based zombies maps that exist. One that is codenamed ZM Quartz and another map that is named ZM Garnet. Now, just because two zombies maps exist in the code right now doesn't mean that we're going to be getting two zombies maps at launch. That was something that we saw repeatedly happen throughout many Black Ops titles, such as Black Ops 1 with Kino and 5, Black Ops 2 with Transit and Nuketown, and Black Ops 3 with Shadows of Evil and the Giant. Black Ops will just turn that on its head with four maps on day one. So let's not get ahead of ourselves. There's either going to be two round-based maps on launch or one round-based map on launch and a future round-based map to launch fairly soon after that. A huge surprise that leakers have revealed on Twitter is that there is going to be a gobblegum-like system coming to the game. Now, this isn't going to be the exact same gobblegum system from Black Ops 3, but what has leaked seemed to suggest that it's going to be some sort of consumable system alike to the gobblegum machine, which in my opinion is a fantastic way to change up the gameplay and I'm so happy that this sort of system is returning. Some other small things we know is that the mystery box is confirmed, pack a punch, the perks, the armor system from Cold War seems to be returning as well as crafting different buildable items. Now the final thing we know before jumping into specifics on each round based zombies map is that according to Windows Central, Activision is discussing a large pre-order early access bonus for the game, which could include several days for the base game and maybe even weeks of early access to other modes. Now up until now we've had campaign early access, which I've really enjoyed. But according to this report, it could be the zombies mode that will have a potential early access week or weeks of early access, which if it ends up happening to me shows how confident Activision and Microsoft are with the zombies mode in this game and potentially how finished and polished it is that they can put it out early. I'd love to know what you think about this rumor of early access in the comments below. And if you're enjoying the video so far, you want to make sure you don't miss out on anything else for this game. You need to hit that subscribe button. It is absolutely free and whilst you're down there and you're enjoying the video give me a thumbs up but let's talk about the round based zombies maps now thanks to the intel from black ops cold war as well as some narrative storyline that we're getting currently in modern warfare zombies we can build a little narrative background to both of these round based maps so starting off with the map codenamed zm quartz this is apparently going to have a ship which might be a pirate ship that will have a cannon trap attached where you will be able to adjust the angle of this trap when using it so from a very first impression from the sounds of it, this map sounds quite big. One of the other very specific parts of the map we know is that it has an elevator which will bring you down to a cell block and a laboratory where on first impressions, it sounds a massive amount like Alcatraz, but we know from recent Modern Warfare Zombies lore that this could actually be referring to a map location known as Terminus Island. Now, again, this could all be theoretical and just a really crazy fan theory that doesn't end up being true. There's a lot of lore that ties all of these threads together, especially considering we know that the game's time period is in the 1990s. And we believe this map location to be exactly where Dr. Peck is pointing to at the end of the Forsaken Easter egg cutscene, as that is our only official teaser in game as to what's happening in the next game. And Dr. Peck is obviously pointing to an island that's in the middle of the ocean. The idea of this being Terminus Island comes from the backstory we learn of Jack Fletcher, who was the founder of Terminus Outcomes and is Zakayev's right-hand man. We learn that he founded Terminus Outcomes in 2011, but his history suggests in 1991, CIA of all people pulled Fletcher from his current role working for a group called NZDF to become security for Terminus Island. Two years later, he was honorably discharged post-mission and the island was never mentioned again, almost like the CIA 
are trying to hide something here, wiping any mention of the island from his service record and any other records as if the island doesn't exist. From what we know of Dr. Beck pointing to an island in the middle of nowhere, and thanks to Modern Warfare Zombies, we know of an island which officially doesn't exist on public record, this 100% links together and has to be Terminus Island. Now with this map also having a prison and a lab, how does that come into play with the story? Well, at the end of Black Ops Cold War, it was revealed that Richtofen, known as the Director, had been in control all along, joining the CIA from a young age. He ordered the strike team to be sent to Black Site 13 for what he defined as indefinite containment. This involved his agents moving on Requiem senior staff and arrested Gray, Carver, Strauss, Weaver, Raptor One and the strike team where he simply watched on from the monitors in his office. Now, when you mention a prison and the fact that we know that every part of the Requiem team were subject to indefinite containment, we can say with almost a guarantee that the prison is where we're going to see continuation of the strike team story and that's probably who we'll be playing as if not alongside in trying to escape. We know the demise of the four Requiem characters due to the intro for Modern Warfare Zombies so there's clearly a massive storyline between them leaving confinement then ending up in that scenario but even with the season one cutscene whilst they appear to be dead I actually don't think they are because they have purple eyes during this vision so I don't actually think they're gone forever but maybe they no longer exist exist in the human physical world, but they exist within the dark ether. One other detail for this map is that there is apparently ascending wire. So a little bit like Mauer de Toten, it sounds like we're able to zip up and down different areas quickly. Moving on to the second round based map, ZM Garnet, this will have a mainline Easter egg that's supposedly already known. It also contains a wonder weapon Easter egg quest. And according to MW3 Intel on Twitter, this will also involve some sort of jump scare Easter egg as part of the quest for the wonder weapon. Now, the only description for this map is that it contains a bank and a church, as well as a lot of rubble. There's police tape also scattered around, so it's likely that this is a city. Now, again, if we use in-game evidence from Black Ops Cold War, we can already draw another potential location for this exact upcoming round base zombies map. And there is a document found in the last Cold War map from the director that details a massive project he is undergoing in West Virginia, a brand new test site and this is all being hidden from the public domain as it's being covered up where a supposed nuclear power plant had experienced a failure and was leaking and all of the citizens in that town had to be evacuated a wall is being constructed as well as three additional venture companies being established to move supplies in including 5,000 tons of steel to help complete this project Richtofen had also hired a batch of new employees 53 scientists 32 military personnel personnel, 18 operations personnel, four custodians, and a partridge and a pear tree. That's 107 employees for what must be a massive undergoing for a project that we don't quite know the details of yet. The description of this is giving off heavy transit vibes, a massive town completely barren of any public life where there is going to be a massive test site built. I assume this is all going to be built for Richtofen's Project Janus plan, which was revealed at the end of Cold War, but the only details we got was that now that Samantha Maxis is trapped in the Dark Aether, Project Janus can now continue. To this day, we still don't know what Project Janus really means, but looking up the definition of Janus, in ancient Rome, Janus was the god of beginnings, gates, transitions, time, duality, doorways, passages, frames, and endings. It is so hard to pinpoint at this stage what exactly this project is going to entail, but whatever it is, is going to be truly mind-blowing when it's finally revealed. Outside of the two rounds, base map details we also have a very comprehensive weapon list already for the game included in that weapon list is two wonder weapons which are going to feature in gulf war zombies the first being the ray gun which is not a surprise but the second is a massive shock there are references to the jet gun from black ops 2's transit making an appearance within black ops gulf war if that means we're going to see the return of the jet gun in a new modern version that is actually good or or if it's referencing a completely different weapon altogether, but just has the code name Jet Gun, I am extremely curious on this one. Because why else 
else would the jet gun be returning if that didn't mean that transit was also coming along with it? Only time will tell, but a big question mark is if we'll see the return of Outbreak within Gulf War Zombies, because currently Modern Warfare Zombies is the new spiritual successor to the original Outbreak. With the amount of effort Treyarch went to to create Modern Warfare Zombies, it seems a massive shame for that to be completely sidelined and not repurposed in some way, shape or form for Black Ops Gulf War. And my assumption, and this is just pure speculation, is that this mode could carry over into Black Ops Gulf War and have a Gulf War themed in terms of the storyline, the time period, the weapons and the equipment. But rather than it be played on Urzikstan, it will be played on the new Warzone map that will be coming for Gulf War, which is heavily rumored to be the Dansk, which if that is the case, that is going to be absolutely insane. I'd much rather Treyarch put all their focus into the round based zombies content on this game, but if they can offer Outbreak as well, groundwork for the mode is already done and there in Modern Warfare Zombies. They would simply just have to port it over to a different map. I genuinely think Modern Warfare Zombies is a fantastic evolution of Outbreak that I'd love to see expanded in the next game. As clearly the content coming for COD 2024 is just so massive that Treyarch just did not have enough development time to fully adapt outbreak in modern warfare but there is a lot of hope that that can happen within gulf war and that's all we know so far but i'm sure we're gonna know more very soon so to not miss out you need to subscribe with the bell ticked and if you enjoyed and learned something new click that thumbs up button